Most gracious and loving God, may the words of all of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, and the actions we take this week bring you glory, honor, and praise. This we pray in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, fair warning before I get into the sermon. This is interactive, so you have to respond. There is no sitting and being passive and quiet. And we're going to start off with some interaction. So, by show of hands, how many of you, of you here have ever wondered what people think of our church when they come to visit? Anybody? Oh, wow, this is much better than 830. I didn't think I'd get this kind of response. See, I find it interesting. We often wonder what our pets think or what other people must think when they hear the latest news or gossip. And then we have even gotten into a culture of where we write what people must be thinking on funny pictures. And then we send them in to late night comedy shows. They've even produced books from those shows on them. But are we ever really concerned about what people think about our church and the experiences they have with us outside these walls? And perhaps I'm just on the strange side, and this is where I included my brother in the sermon. He will attest to the fact that I am strange, I'm sure I should. But I like personally to find out about churches when I travel. And I sort of play a game. Even if I know the church that I'm going to for a meeting, I try to build in time that I can stop and get a cup of coffee or get gas and ask somebody, hey, do you know about this church and where it might be? And normally I get responses like, Oh yeah, that church, they have really good food. And then, well, it's just true, some churches you know, are known for that. And I say, oh, really, do you go there? No, I just know they have good food. That's the word on the street. And then someone else has told me before, and this is actually a frequent response, I don't really know where that church is other than it's on X Street, so it has to be located next to this building. So if you go from here, you'll find it. Yet... In my experiences, I have been looking for a response. Oh, that's my church. Would you like to come? Are you new to town? Are you looking for a place to worship? Not once have I ever been invited into someone's church home. What people know about your church in the community is important. Perhaps we should be asking ourselves, if our church were to disappear overnight, would it matter to Boaz? Would it matter to the Williamstown community? How about Marietta, Vienna, Parkersburg? Perhaps we should be asking ourselves, what do people think when they visit our church? See, these were questions that, although I may be strange and think about sometimes, seminary forces you to ask yourself. <coughs> and we were given a creative assignment one day in seminary. We had to take seriously the scriptural passage of welcoming a stranger in a foreign land. We were expected to visit a church and pretend to be an alien. Yes, I'm talking about the green Martian type. And I don't mean they asked us to dress up like an alien or pretend to speak a different language. But they did ask us to attend a church that was not familiar to us. To observe things as if we did not speak the language. And then to write a report and return it to our commanding officer on the spaceship. Also known as our professor. So I thought I would share with you one of the stories that was shared by an alien in a strange land called New Jersey. And the young lady who wrote this in my class titled her paper, Recordings of a Stranger in a Foreign Land. I landed in the town of Flemington, New Jersey. According to the information given to me by the local server at a coffee shop where I parked my spaceship, this is a bedroom community. That is for the cities of Philadelphia and New York. What an interesting statement, because everywhere I look, there are businesses and shopping centers. I would assume that there would only be beds, or houses filled just with beds, but I guess people here need something more than beds in this town. Anyway, back to the point. I bought a cup of coffee as a peace offering for parking my spaceship in their parking lot. And upon leaving the coffee shop, I realize I'm walking down this thing called Main Street. Or at least that's what the woman at the coffee shop called the central point of travel. I passed this historic courthouse and hotel. 
where she says the Lindenberg trial took place. Or at least I think that's what it is. This girl at the coffee shop, she just went on and on and on and showed me these pictures of what appears to be a map. But the technology here is lacking. After all, we are pretty technological out here in space. And our maps are 3D and this one was flat. And I'd already checked out the town on my GPS system and it wasn't exactly coordinating with the map she gave me. And immediately leaving these historic sites, I found myself at the historic Flemington United Methodist Church. It was made up of old gray stones and has a sign that runs parallel with the street. Whoever put the sign in did not anticipate people actually being able to read it because it was not visible to the speeding cars on the road. I don't know, perhaps they put it in before cars were ever used to travel in this space. And the information on the sign advertises the name of the church leader, as well as the times for Sunday school and services. And then there's this big blank spot on the board for something called the sermon title. The church has also placed a strange, flimsy plastic sign in the front yard, and it just goes back and forth with the wind. And when I approached it, I could tell that it was a sign with the following symbols inside out and upside down on Main Street. Then I'm not so sure about the rest of it. There were these three symbols, V, B, X. So strange, these humans. I'm not sure what it means, but it promises whatever it is to have a dog to visit the children. Or at least that's what it appears like, because there's this picture of a dog surrounded with children in balloons. I just don't understand. Dogs are such dirty creatures. Why would parents ever let their children play with such filth on a busy street? Whoever put this flimsy sign up understood, though, that people would see this from the road, and they would perhaps see it better than the sign that they had facing the road. Besides the signs, there was a front door painted red. It stands out against some kind of gray stone building, and there were flowers that adorned the border of the church. In order to go through that door, you had to pass the signs and go up the three steps and the, pass the flowers. I guess you can't come here if you can't walk. And in the corner of the room that you enter, there's two doors. And one of them sort of stands open. And then there's this weird white and black thing that holds flowers. Flowers that are made of plastic. I guess the air in here where there's no light won't allow anything to grow. And in the opposite corner of the same small room is just this white rope hanging from the ceiling. I'm not sure what purpose it serves, and there's no sign to explain it, like the markers that were found in front of the church. As I entered one of the doors, I found myself in a large box-shaped room. And upon entering the room, a man begins to chase me with a piece of paper, <laughs> waving it at me. And on it is a picture of the building, as well as other symbols that match those used on the signs in the front. The man says something to me and then points his arm across all the rows. The seating is very odd because it's shaped on a curve in a square room and it's all surrounded by this large square box in the front. And in that box there are these metal things that sort of run into each other. Two of them are in a line and where they join there's a sign that says IHS. And on the sides of them there are some tall and white gold things that are just a little shorter. And behind this table with all of these decorations, there's this white flat surface. And around it, they have this shiny material. The man that handed me the paper continues to bother me and waves his arm. So I decided that he might want me to sit with the other humans. So I walk to what appears to be the main entrance for seating. And I notice this small box in the back, where one person's sitting with a board of controls in front of them. It sort of looks like something from my spaceship. I sure hope he didn't steal it, because that would make the boss angry. And right next to the model spaceship board was this big table with all sorts of papers with symbols on it. And next to that was this contraption attached to the booth where the man was standing. It appeared to move in the direction that he pushed it, but it remained steady at the same time due to him being attached to the stand. And just beyond the stand was a board with pictures and symbols on it. And there was a lady standing. And she then began to approach me. And soon a chase ensued across the, built the room. This time she came at me with a little piece of paper and a sharp pointy object. And she kept pointing to her chest. 
And finally, she got so frustrated with me that she...